So today we are here uh, with Felix, which is a personal friend of mine that I met uh, when I was uh, living in New Zealand. And today Felix li lives in Sydney and I'm going to let him present himself. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. In cold Germany. <laughs> well, mm. in, in Sydney it's a bit warmer. Um, it's raining at the moment, but who cares? Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm, li I'm living here uh, for, for a couple of years now. Um, originally, I'm from, from Germany, uh, Stralsund in the northeast of Germany. Um, yeah, I, I went to school there, studied around there before, went on an exciting journey. So um, I thought like after my studies, I should find a good job, but um, it turned out to be a bit more difficult than I expected. So okay. I went through all, all these kind of um, unpenships and um, until I finally thought like, oh Jesus, I just want to want to get out of this and uh, improve my English um, at that time. And then, yeah, finally traveled to New Zealand where I met you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, to, to put a long story short, after they kicked me out in New Zealand due to visa issues, <laughs> <laughs> I'm living <in> now. <laughs> yeah, like every, like every migrant, I know exactly what you're talking about with the, with the visa issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I'm still having similar issues. Yeah. I think I was never actually like kicked. Well, I was partially kicked out. So yeah, from from Germany, from your country. Yeah, but I came back. I came back. I'm very. Resilient. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, one 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 aspect uh, of of your life, like in all the the things you do, that uh, I almost forgot to mention, is that you. You love you play handball and you love handball, right? And you're kind of a yes, F, absolutely. Yeah, and an F one freak, right? So there are yes, two things. I'm, that, I'm going next in the next um, month again to the Formula One here in Melbourne. Awesome. Is that, <laughs> is that like how many times did you go so far? Um, I think this will be my third time. Um, also funny because the occasion is my thirtieth birthday. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Flying out yeah. In the Flying out in the early morning and then spending four days on the racetrack down in Melbourne and just enjoying life. <laughs> nice, nice. And all, all the races you went uh, were, in, were in Melbourne? Uh, yes. The Formula One that, that I watched were all in Melbourne, but I went to our um, sports series, um, the DTM in Germany, um, and then some other race um, how, how did you get shows. These? This is actually something we never we never talked about to be honest. But like, how did you how did you it's develop true. this thing? I mean, Germans are like crazy about cars and, and just like the the core of the industry here. But like, how how did you get to love F one so much? I have actually no idea. Um, the only, the 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 first thing I remember is like watching Formula One with with my dad and um, we went to, to, to a friend's place and um, we tried to get, I think we had Playstations at that time, but the Playstation didn't work or something. And then uh, my dad got upset and just uh, turned on TV and watched some, some racing there. And it turned out to be Formula One. And I found it quite, quite interesting, like fast cars, the, 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 sh the shapes back then, like I had no idea what I'm watching, right? And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> usually we just um, play video game or played video games with, um, yeah, normal looking cars, let's put it that way. And, yeah. and then we had those super fast um, series and yeah, I got hooked with it like straight away. I don't know. I, I w wanted to watch another race uh, straight after Obviously, the races are not like every hour. It's like more every two weeks kind of thing. But yeah, yeah that's exactly. Um, <laughs> I wanted to get more and more, and never stopped. Yeah, do, and do you have a do you have a, a uh, like a favorite driver or I don't know what a, a team in the in the F one that you like more? Absolutely. Um, well, I actually uh, like a couple of drivers, um, but. 
since day one, I'm um, following the Mercedes team. Okay. Obviously, the German. They produce quite nice cars and were yeah. quite successful, especially <laughs> for the last couple of years. <laughs> um, um, surprisingly, usually not quite with the German drivers. Vettel is a good bloke, but um, my favorite is absolutely Lewis Hamilton. And really? I support him. And, uh, That's curious. And I really hope he, he can be as good as uh, Michael Schumacher this year. So, oh, okay. the seventh time. Ah, he's going <laughs> for the seventh this year. Nice. Yes. Yeah. He equalized the record. And next year he's going to break it. Wow. Okay. You're very optimistic <laughs> about, <laughs> about Louis Hamilton. But yeah, that's curious. I would, I would think you would, you would say like uh, Schumacher or Vettel or any like German drivers. But yeah, that's curious. Yeah. No, like you would be surprised. Like me and my dad, we were from day one against uh, Michael Schumacher. We were always supporting his, his rivals. Um, okay. Like the, the first season why? when I started watching this was Jacques Villeneuve. And then we went to, over oh, Mika Hakkinen yeah, yeah. and, <laughs> and Kimi Raikkonen, Alonso. Then I think then was the time when, when Hamilton joined. So, so his rookie season was already very impressive. Yeah. And yeah. Then, well, then after that, the time with Mich uh, Michael nice. Schumacher was over. Yeah. But, yeah. But I mean, aside, aside from, from F1, I know you play handball and I know you also love handball. That I bet it started at school or or something like that, right? I, I used to in play the, there in, in Australia. Um, not at the very moment because we have um summer break or the, the beach handball season is on. But yeah, I started in school. Uh, um, my best friend. And at the time, we had a team, and then we had as actually, um, hopefully, it's harder and harder. I'm not sure how it uh, was at that time, maybe 11, 12 or so. And yeah, it was just fun. So I uh, wanted to join him, and I wanted actually to play in his team, but um, because you go by, by years, um, I was not allowed to because I was too young to play with him in, in the same team. Okay. But, I made friends in the other team. I played my hometown. I met the most amazing, craziest, funniest, um, also competitive uh, people <laughs> that, <laughs> that I ever met. <laughs> and I kept playing during uni times. Um, in New Zealand, I had a little break. Um, as you remember, I didn't play much handball over there. Yeah, not, yeah, to be honest. True. True. But, um, yeah, in Australia, I picked it up again, and I still love it. I, maybe I'm getting a little old for that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pain is uh, more painful, but uh, it's still a fun game. <laughs> yeah, because here in Germany, here in Germany, the, the the handball is like quite a big thing. You know, like the national team is like won many many times, right? Many many championships. But, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't know about Australia. Like, if, if they're more like cricket and rugby and like, I don't know, netball. Like people <laughs> like to like to say netball is a sport, but anyway, I'm not gonna get into that. <laughs> uh, you'll be surprised. I actually, uh, played it once now. Um, from really? work, we have like a, a a sports group, and I usually play volleyball once a week, but yeah. um. The, the netball players were a bit short in players, so I was like, oh, yeah, sports it is during, during lunch break. And um, yeah. I played one netball um, game. Um, I was a defender. I think I was a bit too harsh and too rough to, to, <laughs> to play it because it's similar to basketball in a sense. It's like a non-touch kind of game, while with, especially with the handball background, um, it went a bit differently. <laughs> um, there, there was this, this poor girl. Um, apparently, as long as the ball is in the air, from my understanding, you can still jump for it. So I did. But apparently, there was a girl right in front of me. And I jumped on her. I got her out of balance. <laughs> and she looked really, really mad with me. Um, because, obviously, I was not quite... Um, 
playing the rules, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing I, to know I, the I, rules before you play a sport, right? So. <laughs> I, I, I asked for them and they, I knew the rule that you can't really move as, when you have the ball in the hands. Um, you have, need to land and yeah need to pass and then you can run um you have like certain zones that you can't cross depending on your position you have like one guy who can run over the whole field you have attackers and defenders while attacker can't defend and cross a certain line defenders on the other hand can't cross a certain line to attack um Jesus. yeah i made so many mistakes i was like the it referee sounds... got a bit um mad with me because everyone else knew the rules uh but yeah <laughs> it sounds very complicated to be honest <laughs> was probably not, not 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 the best introduction to that sport um <laughs> i told the team that that i resigned on the spot <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my, oh, my, my netball career is over with, with the age of 29. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it was a wise decision to keep to keep to handball. Yeah, yeah, it was good. <laughs> but you mentioned that that you were playing, uh, you were playing at at lunchtime, and and that is that is an interesting thing because I don't think people do much at lunchtime in Germany aside from having lunch. Because like it's usually half an hour break. So how, like, how is this the is the difference like between the, the I know I know it didn't like work a lot in Germany uh, like a long time, but what what is the difference that that you see in, in the workplace in Australia and the workplace in Germany? Like how I don't know what are the big differences. Well, for, for from the experience that I had um, during my internship. Lunchtime basically meant, yeah, as you mentioned, you go to the canteen, you grab your lunch, or you you eat your your lunchbox from from home. You eat and you go back to your desk. Um, quite similar when when we worked together in in New Zealand, um, we yeah. had a bit more of a break. Um, in Germany, I can't recall. Um, was it half an hour? I, I think mostly it's half, half an hour. hour yeah. Then you just yeah. go back. In in New Zealand, we usually had like one hour, um, which I usually schedule with 20 minutes eating and then 40 minutes um, yeah, going for a walk around the block or so, um, yeah. enjoying the, 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 the nature around the office. Um, I also had naps during, during <laughs> my, my lunch break. Uh, <laughs> we had this little um, section where the... Um, yeah, re refurbished the rooms. So, uh, I've not, I forgot what what they did there. But like, there were a lot of bean bags and couches, and uh, no one really used that space. So um, yeah, I found I myself that. quite often um, <laughs> pushing all those bean bags together and um, building um, a little bed for me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's more. It, it's more. I know. I know from New Zealand. Yeah, you have an hour. People usually take like fifteen minutes in the morning, and then like a half an hour lunch break then 15 minutes in the afternoon but you also had the option to take one hour oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and it, here i don't think maybe maybe some companies i don't know but in germany i don't think people take one hour even if they could because they want to get back to work so i don't know do, do you feel it's a bit more relaxed like in new zealand or australia it, is it different new zealand and australia in terms of, of the workplace um to be honest, in Australia and New Zealand, it seems quite similar, um, depending where the office is. Like I found in the CBD, people are more, um, you go for lunch, you finish off your lunch and you go back to your desk. Um, in New Zealand, I remember some people had their lunch on their desk and didn't even go to the kitchen or went out to, to buy lunch or so. Um, yeah, yeah in, in, in the current office that I'm working, um, People are not allowed to eat um, at their desk, so they have to go to the kitchen or most of them just go out and buy lunch somewhere, go to um, like takeaway shops um, okay. and, and grab something there. Um, but yeah, most, I would say most of them, um, they have like a relaxed environment, like sitting there when they grab their lunch and sit somewhere in the park or so, have, have a chat and then 
slowly come back after a while. Um, yeah. This company that I'm working for has the options like to have like lunchtime activities. Um, there are things such as CrossFit. Um, there were a lot of runners group that are joined um, a couple of times. We have um, everyday different um, activities such as uh, netball, volleyball, basketball. I'm not sure what other teams we've got, but there are a couple more. Um, yeah. yeah, but people are quite active, especially during during lunch break. And nice. yeah, I think they really need the time to switch off, not just eating and going back to work. They're like totally switching off, relaxing and go back. Yeah. And just just for for all the listeners, when Felix says CBD, he means city center because it's something that like people don't don't usually use around around here. So I know because sure. I live there. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. So it seems like it's it's really it's really more relaxed in there, which I expected to to be honest. Um, but aside from aside from work, is there? Anything that you miss about Germany? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> um, yeah, there's obviously uh, there are a couple of things that I miss. Obviously, my my family, my friends from home. Um, yeah. I have to admit that the German food is really good. Um, fish and chips. I nice, will agree but, to disagree, you know, but okay. <laughs> Man, you know, like fish and chips are nice, but if you have it like every day or every second day, it's getting kind of boring. Um, I, mean, I really man, love the I'm burgers from, over I'm here, but burgers with chips is again <laughs> not, not the, the, the best. See, uh, but like my perspective, uh, I'm from Brazil. I'm I date a girl from Mexico, so our culinary is just insanely good. So when people say, "Oh yeah, German food is really good," I'm like. I agree to disagree, but anyway, go go ahead. Like I'll let you continue. <laughs> no. <laughs> when I lived in Germany, I didn't appreciate that much. Um, like it was just standard to me, you know. It's like, oh yeah, this food again, nothing, nothing too special. But then, yeah, yeah. Um, so since coming here and the variety of food, well, there are a lot of Asian takeaways and a lot of Asian shops and. I mean, there's a lot, but like, if you really stick yeah. to the traditional Aust Australian food, you're quite limited in your options. Um, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm made a fun of uh, searching about um, the the top ten um, best Australian foods. Um, okay. You you had Tim Tam in, in New Zealand, right? Yes. The Tim yes. Tam, yes, that was pretty good. It was like a yeah. little, little biscuit with with chocolate. Yep. Yeah. And um, they are of this and having like a chocolate biscuit in that ranking was a bit surprising. Also, these um, Vegemite bread and whatever the, those things are called. But yeah, fish and chips, burgers. <laughs> then there's a lot of yeah questionable stuff <laughs> <laughs> i can imagine but that but that does that mean that you you cook a lot at home and you cook some some german food at home or or not uh, i think i'm not able to cook german food um i like the german places here to, to go for 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 food and and the beer um it's mostly my girlfriend cooking at the moment um okay. she is not from germany she's taiwanese yeah uh, so she doesn't really cook australian food she also doesn't really cook german food um <laughs> she prepares a lot of um mixed food i would would say so um having like a western idea with a touch of asian um yeah, it's more like a mix. I wouldn't even classify this as proper Asian, proper Western food, proper Australian food, or yeah, yeah, it's just like a proper potpourri of of food. <laughs> but there, there's one interesting thing that every time I interviewed a German or I talked to to a German outside of Germany, that you didn't say, but I remember you you said before to me, which is German bread. Which is something that when we talk with German people, they're like, "Yeah, bread, bread, bread." I I miss the bread. I really miss the bread. 
<laughs> is that something that you miss there too? Because I mean, now living here, I it's amazing. Like the bread culture here and the quality of the bread is just amazing. <laughs> uh, let, let's put it that way. Um, my girlfriend and I we started making our own breads um, because we're not happy with the offer that we've got here. Um, that says a lot. <laughs> Yeah, well, we, we, we got this um, idea of making our own food in, in general. Like, we make our own ginger beers now. We make our... Wow, um, okay. I made my own own beers, like normal beers over the last year. Um, we started making bread. I tried kombucha and a couple of things. But, yeah, I think the bread is something we, we keep actually, alive. And we... actually remember something really funny when I right off the bat when I went to, to New Zealand right when I got there so we don't have ginger beer in Brazil and <laughs> it's called I never had it at home <laughs> yeah see but it's called beer right it's uh, like ginger yeah. beer I was like oh interesting a beer made of ginger and I didn't know it was like soda you <laughs> like actually <laughs> And I was like, oh, yeah, let's try this new beer. And I drank it. I was like, what? This thing doesn't give you any buzz. You know, there's no, there's no. And then I started reading it, thinking I was drinking beer, and it was actually not beer. So, yeah. I think it's more about the process rather than, than, the, than the ingredients. Um, yeah, like the first time I had a ginger beer, similar experience. I was like, hmm, this doesn't taste like beer at all. And it's like more more this spiciness sweet yeah more like a soda drink yeah like, yeah le good. lemonade basically because there's a culture of ginger beer in, in australia and new zealand so it's it's actually good they're like really good brands yeah, yeah i love it. I, I really love it and um since we started making our own we're getting better maybe not good enough to be commercial but <laughs> yeah so i guess you maybe I one day you, we have a ginger beer yeah. <laughs> sure. So I asked you, like, uh, what do you miss about, about Germany? And you started, like, uh, um, after that, you started naming some things from, from Australia. Is there, like, anything in Australia that you say the time you were adapting there? Well, let's say Australia or New Zealand, because you also spent, like, what, two years in New Zealand before going to Australia? Uh, I uh, one and a half in, in New Zealand, and in May, I'm going to be in Australia for around four years. Wow, damn, that's yeah, that's a long time. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I was about to I was about to ask uh about like it, it was there something there that made it difficult for you to adapt, or like kind of you didn't have anything that you say, oh okay, this was really hard. Um, not really. I think um, I think the biggest struggle that I had was at the beginning. Um, speaking English, um, when I arrived there, I hang out with a lot of German backpackers and then just getting like a coffee or something really, really simple. And it's like the, the, the confidence to, to talk in English to someone where you yeah. were like, Oh, how do I say this? I don't <laughs> want to make any mistake here. I know I don't care. Probably like during this interview, I've made so many mistakes and I just don't care anymore, right? Um, I hope it's as correct as possible, but I'm aware I'm not speaking perfectly. So yeah, so this was the biggest challenge for me, I think. And then um, especially, I went to a farm with, um, how many were we? Um, I think there were two German girls and a Canadian girl with me. Yeah. We went to this farm in the north of the South Island in New Zealand. And the, those, two hosts, they had such a thick accent, right? It yeah. was so terribly bad that I couldn't understand the guy from day one to the end that I left. Um, like, <laughs> I simply could not understand him. Um, the, the host mom, she was um, a little bit better, still very, very hard to understand. But then there was this Canadian girl, and again, my, my English was not very good at that stage. So... Um, the other two backpackers, the, the Germans, 
they were struggling as well. So the only way how to figure out what's going on was talking to this Canadian girl. So I started talking, talking, talking to, to her and she translated uh, the complicated New Zealand um, accent into simple English, which I could pick up. And this yeah. was probably the biggest, biggest challenge. Nothing to adapt, but <laughs> yeah, this was really, yeah, really challenging. Honest, I had a similar experience. And I, <laughs> I, 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 really, I really think it's, May, it might be the best region in the world to learn English, not because it's so clear, just because of the, the opposite. If you can learn English from New Zealanders and Australians, then you can understand anybody else because oh. <laughs> it's oh, so no, no, no. hard. <laughs> it, it helps a lot, yeah, but um, yeah, well, sometimes watching a movie with such a strong English accent or like all the Western movies. I love to watch Western movies. I just don't understand yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I get it. I had a, at the beginning, I had a hard time too. I mean, when I went to New Zealand, I could already speak English fluently, no problem, but the accent, it completely threw me off. It was like, oh my God, what's going on here? Is this even English? And then you get used to it and then it, uh, it's fine. I, I, mean, I actually, I actually miss the, the accent from New Zealand now um, because, I mean, I don't know, here people usually speak either the British English, but most people just speak the, the American English. So it's very clear and mm. yeah, it's easy to, to understand. Yeah, I remember like uh, same example on, on, on that farm with the host family where when um, the, the, the host mom asked me to, to pick something up from, from the shed, and I was like, mm, I'm not going to touch <laughs> any shit. <laughs> Until it turned out that this was just her accent, right? Yeah. And she, she was meant to say shed, yeah. which I probably wouldn't have known but anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> like talking about a little tiny house in the backyard or, you know, <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. a little bit of a difference. And this was a bit funny and awkward because i didn't really like know how to to, to react like sh shall i ask or is yeah. this something um serious <laughs> or <laughs> oh so, my God. so again this canadian girl just helped me out and she pointed at this little shed <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> oh man but you, but you're talking about some things that was difficult to to adapt uh, in Australia, and I obviously like the same I asked for Germany, I'll ask for uh, for Australia. Like, what is what keeps you in Australia? Like, like what do you like the most about this this country to be there for such a long time and like not not being in Germany? What, what do you like more in in Australia? It's most likely my girlfriend because uh, when I came here. <laughs> so let me get this uh, straight. I, the thing you like more about Australia is a person that is not <laughs> from Australia. Yeah. <laughs> this sounds a bit confusing, but I think to summarize it. Is. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember I had plans. I had plans to um, how to explore Australia, and my idea was. Um, with the working holiday visa, I, I was aware you can only work six months on the same visa. If you yeah. do your farm work for, for um, 88 days, um, you can extend your visa. So having all this in mind, I already like had a plan going to Sydney first, staying and working there for six months, traveling along the north coast because it then turned winter. So I could, could do my farm work on the way, um, staying another six months in, in, in Perth. Um, exploring the city there and the area, working, making more money, traveling to, to Melbourne. Um, by the, the time I arrived there, Formula One and tennis uh, would have been on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then leaving the country. Um, fun fact, I never left Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. No, yeah. I understand. And then, well, and then you ended up, yeah, I kind of know, like, then it, you ended up, like, getting a job in Sydney and decided decided to stay. But, I mean, I also remember that, that you told me you were quite happy with your, with your choice about, about Sydney. 
Absolutely. I love this place here. It's um, not just the Opera House and, and the Harbour Bridge, which is really impressive to see, uh, obviously. But yeah, I just love to have like beaches, good weather, friendly people. I have to say Australians are quite friendly, not as friendly as the um, the, the, the Kiwis. They were just, I don't know, is, is there's like a, the, the most friendliest, like, beyond yeah. that <laughs> i agree it's it's funny i said many times in this podcast that new zealand is the best place in the world it's the best country in the world and a, a big part of it is the people there that they're so friendly and absolutely I mean, you can make friends so easily and it's i mean we both lived in auckland so it's very international so it's a it's a very uh, good place to be and of course i don't know I'll... australia because i didn't i didn't live there yeah I remember in New Zealand, there was this, this this guy, it was a rainy day, and I just wanted to walk to the train station, and you, you remember I lived like, I don't know, 10 minutes walk maximum away from the train station, or yeah. maybe even less, and I just walked five meters outside my house, and there was this one guy um, yelling at me, are you okay, are you okay? I was like, uh, yeah, sure. Maybe I should just ignore this guy because <laughs> like, I was afraid something's going to happen, right? And he keeps asking, and and then the, the closer, because I walked towards um, him, um, he had his car there and just packed something up. I have no idea what, what he's done. And he asked me, oh, where, where do you want to go? I was like, oh, I'm, I'm just walking to the train station. I'll drive you, I'll drive you. So I was like, no, 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 it's okay. It's, it's you know, it's around the corner. I'm already like halfway there. Yeah. I said, no, 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 I'll drive you. And he insisted that he needs to drive me. And he yeah. drove me to the train station. I was like, wow, this is, this is so different. Yeah, like personally, I, mean, I would probably never even consider this option. I mean, like now after this experience, I'm obviously m more eager to, to help. But before that, this was just unimaginable. Like, I would yeah. never do this. <laughs> this, is, this is one thing. You remember a, pe a perfect example, because uh, this is one thing about New Zealand that that's one of the things that amazes me the most. I heard so many of these stories you know, of people helping people just because, you know, just because they can help it. And it, the, the effect is exactly what you said. It's like uh, you end up like doing something for somebody else just because you got, you got help at some point. You yeah, know? So uh, that's, absolutely. That's absolutely amazing about New Zealand. But I mean, talking about the experiences in New Zealand, we had some some interesting experiences ourselves in <laughs> in that country. <laughs> yeah, but, but I, I, I think I can't share those ones with, without swearing and blaming you that, that you tried to kill me. So <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it, it's fine. We can we can tell one or two maybe. Yeah. So uh, one thing that you all, always like keep remembering every time we talk is the time that we. <laughs> Well, you keep saying I almost killed you, but yeah, that's what we do. We Brazilians, you know, we almost kill people. <laughs> but we, we were climbing someplace. Yeah, I'll let you tell the story because, yeah, this is interesting. Yeah. This is just a horrible story. So we had this weekend trip, <laughs> just the two of us. Um, we had a long chat on the car right there. We worked it out. We wanted to climb up the Mount Taranaki, which is like a big volcano up there. And yeah, so so in the early morning, we started to do this, this climb, parked the car, um, packed up and then started walking. And then we just kept walking, walking, like, I don't know, after five or 10 minutes, I asked you, oh, have you seen those um, little guiding poles with the little orange um, arrows or little flag or whatever this is? And then this guy, like, Honestly, don't listen to to him. He was, <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, and I thought like, well, those, you know, when you go for a hike, there are always little poles to guide you the way or little arrows. And he didn't yeah. even know what I was talking about. <laughs> so <laughs> then he, he like tried to, to find some of those little poles, flags, whatever on the way. So we went deeper and deeper into nowhere <laughs> and and i mean at the beginning he tried to convince me oh he, he's done this before and he survived and um, then he asked me the, the most hilarious question and uh, it made sense um so i couldn't really 
like what what was the question do you remember no did i remember the question i just looked up and kept walking i was like yeah 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 i'm good i'm good i know no 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 you 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 asked me you asked me one thing you asked me one thing we want to climb this mountain right so what's yeah. the best way to go up the mountain exactly go up the mountain go up the mountain yeah <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> That that's exactly what we've done. So at the beginning, it was quite all right, uh, but it got steeper, steeper, steeper until we started climbing. And I mean, <laughs> I, I I hope you you don't share the pictures, but like we were equipped, like well, can't 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 say that. No experience, not the right equipment in gravel climbing, volcano rocks. Um, so so climbing, climbing, climbing. You know, you have to like yeah. hold on to this little rocks in the volcano and then you put your weight in there, you pull yourself up. That's how you get up. And one of those rocks um, seemed very um, trustful for, for me. So I put my weight in there. Um, the rock was loose. I lost my balance. Um, I, I managed somehow to, to grab another rock there. And it's like, oh, this was scary. And... <laughs> look down it's like oh this wasn't just scary i was probably 15 meters above the next yeah. <laughs> plateau or something um full of gravel obviously so it's not like if you fall 15 meters down you land softly and you know there's a cushion bag yeah. and i was like and when i realized i nearly died there um, <laughs> because with my experience i would probably not be able to be like a cat and land on my on my paws or on my feet <laughs> <laughs> and I was shocked. I actually asked you to have a little break, and you were like, "Oh, just just climb up, you know. Time yeah. is not <laughs> with us." And I, I, and I repeatedly asked you, like, "Oh, can we just have a break? I need to digest the whole situation." I probably had like like half my hunch, uh, lunch back, and uh, I couldn't handle this. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's I think my favorite story with you. <laughs> yeah, one of the few times that a Brazilian person tells a German person, no breaks here, there's no breaks here, just keep going, just keep working. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember that, and I, I remember that, I mean, we did some actual rock climbing, which was, was scary, it was really scary, and then it was, it was nice, it was really nice at the top, it was like, it was a sunny day, so it was really nice, but then there was more insanity. Oh yeah, I remember. I also got sunburned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But on the on the way back, I remember that was more like more craziness because I was I wanted to to go down like far, and I was like kind of hopping on on some rocks, but I completely went in the wrong direction. <laughs> so. <laughs> I was in the middle of nowhere. I could I couldn't see Felix anymore. I was like, oh my god! <laughs> but it, it was nice. It was a it was a really nice uh, hike. It was a really nice ex experience there. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I can agree. After the hike, it it was nice. But like during the hike, I probably <laughs> threw a couple of words your direction, and none of them were really nice. But I'm happy <laughs> we've done this trip. <laughs> We we took some nice pictures from from the from, from the summit. Uh, even did some some acro yoga. Yeah, um, yeah. And yeah. oh Jesus, we probably have Just a have lot of pictures relax. like <laughs> rolling around the the internet because like people were taking pictures of us. Yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> it was an interesting day. It was a really interesting day. But yeah, New Zealand, I know New Zealand haven't been the only place like that you visited and then you, you traveled. And you were, you were telling me that you went to Taiwan with your girlfriend, right? And then yep. you, went to, you also went to, to Vietnam. So how, like, I, have, I have actually two questions in one. First of all, how is it, like, because a, a German like, culture, there's, I agree. I guess there's nothing to do with Taiwanese culture. So it's like, how, how did you like adapt? How, how did you get to this, to the point where you guys like, are okay, you live in peace, you don't like, you're not trying to kill each other or like disagree on everything? <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I think we never had a stage where we just try to to kill each other or um, it was just easy. Um, I did a lot of um, yeah. Well, Went from hostel to hostel at the beginning, got a flat that I wasn't really happy. I was sharing with, uh, I have no idea, three other guys in the room. So it was like a hostel, just more long-term solution. Um, so people want to move in and out and um, yeah, I moved places and places. And she had like the same kind of living arrangements. And um, it was just weird because my, my landlord um, he didn't allow me to bring friends over. So we always had to meet outside. She had the same same arrangement. I was like, oh, this is just awkward and bad. And you can't that just live like, like that. This landlord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, don't get me started with <laughs> But yeah, I, I think the point is we were like both not really happy. And because Sydney is quite an expensive city, right? Um, yeah. You try to save money as much as you can to just survive and enjoy life. I mean, outside my living arrangements, it was, you know, it's a nice place, but it's expensive. Yeah. And so we came, or, or I came to the conclusion, hey, let's just move together, you know? We are both travelers here. We don't know um, whether this is forever so just just give it a try if it fails then you know we are still travelers we can break up go home um, <laughs> but if it works out i mean we're still together we're in the second place now um our second um house and yeah we're still yeah. together so it, it kind of worked out but like i asked her so many times um i think 19 times with getting a straight no. <laughs> We're not going to move together. And then she started like, yeah, maybe. And to, like, let this guy talk, you know, this kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then probably the 30th, 30th time or so, um, she was like, oh yeah, let's move together. You you look yeah. more flat. Because I think he was still a bit skeptical and it's like, yeah, but I was full on serious. I was looking for a flat i got us an apartment and but is there is yeah, there so is that like happened. after you move <laughs> after you moved to the <laughs> was there anything like from her culture that you had to adapt or try to understand because i can i can tell you in my case like i just i i can't adapt to so much spicy food from mexico it's like mexican food is amazing but since my girlfriend is living with me every time she cooks i'm like spitting fire <laughs> so is there any like cultural aspect that it's then even let's be honest you, you even had uh, problems after my food when i cooked like my my, my version of chili <laughs> oh my god your chili con carne was just like uh, very spicy very very spicy <laughs> i think this was the first time that my food and i usually put a lot of chili actually turned out to be spicy <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, you loved it. Um, yeah, but <laughs> it was good. Yeah. <laughs> but is there um, any like cultural aspect between like her culture and your culture that you struggled with, or did you, or that you liked, or something like that? Mm, I have to say, like maybe just my girlfriend. Maybe I'm not speaking for the whole culture. Like she's very peaceful. Like it's not yeah. like. Like your every day you have those very emotional fights and stuff like it's very calm very peaceful that i absolutely love um yeah well what i struggled with the most it's probably a, more funny than actually like a, a bad thing yeah. is like eating with an open open mouth kind of thing like when you have your soup and you hear the sound like oh, it's like, oh yeah. my goodness what are you doing <laughs> 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 that actually makes um, perfect sense because I forgot that in Asia this is pretty normal. It's like it's no, <laughs> no, no. It's not just normal. It's it's polite to do that. And um, if you don't make noises, you, like when you eat, you're kind of like offensive towards the chef because if you can't hear that you enjoy it, you don't enjoy it, right? Oh and my god! <laughs> and I I know you this was weird. Think... So I'm I'm still. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I know you visited like, her yeah. family because it's like it's interesting. I know you went to Taiwan and visited her family. Did you make like a lot of noises like just to make that you like show that you're really happy with the food when you were we were there? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have. I'm not sure if they took it serious that I didn't. <laughs> no, I clearly didn't make. Oh, I try not to make any sounds during eating, like because I feel annoyed when people do that. So I yeah. like I still have the impression that I offend other people. Same with, um, like after after the food, um, some sometimes they burp, and it's absolutely normal. Um, my girlfriend doesn't doesn't do it here, um, but like when I was traveling there, like the the, the neighbor table was just burping all the time. I was like, oh, okay, hello. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I think that the food over there was so different. Um, or when I went traveling there, I actually started in in Vietnam for for two weeks, and yeah. like all the eating. Um, environment you you go and um, you don't really cook you go to the shop in the morning for breakfast for lunch for for dinner and have like different kind of meals you have soup or spicy stuff in the morning sometimes so it's like okay like personally I would not like start today with something spicy that knocks me out for the rest of the day <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, all this scooter culture, like it's really, really crowded there. And yeah. um, 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 I made a fun and um, got myself a scooter. So I was. Oh um, this my was, god! <laughs> <laughs> this this was already in, in in Taiwan. I got one of those electric scooter, and um, I remember how how they asked me, "Do I do I have a license?" And I said, "Yes, I have a license. I showed my license." And yeah. um, they, they looked at me, well, we, we don't accept your license here, so you're considered not having a license. And I looked at him, so can I borrow a scooter or, or not? Like, what do you want to tell me? And he said, well, without a license, it's um, some dollars more expensive. And I was like, oh, okay, I get that. <laughs> and, uh, very very I flexible rules. He, absolutely. And I, I was like, hmm. I even struggled to check in in, in my hostels here because um, in Taiwan, uh, my girlfriend went home for some um, doctor's appointments and stuff. And I think sometimes I'm, I'm too, too too serious like and honest to her. And I said, I really don't care about your doctor's appointments. So I go traveling and explore your country while you do all that. <laughs> <laughs> so I was by myself, got, got the scooter by myself. Um, well, um, unfortunately, I was kind of forced to bribe this guy, although it was officially written on, on their, um, on, on, on their, how do you say, a menu or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. <here. laughs> and pay, pay more if you don't have a license. And yeah, so I did. I uh, drove the scooter, and the way you like, like protect yourself, look, look forward, um, con like get an idea of the traffic um it's not whatever happens behind you you really don't care because you don't have the time to look back so even what happens to your left and right mm -hmm. it's mostly out of your focus you only look forward because you need to be able to react off whatever the person in front of you does and <laughs> like maneuvering all these kind of things never like rode a scooter before right uh, have to like it was <laughs> terrible and i probably killed myself again but <laughs> <laughs> see this time and wouldn't be my fault it wouldn't be my fault this time <laughs> you didn't take care of me it's your fault again <laughs> <laughs> um oh this was, was an experience and oh uh, I, I forgot a good story. The, the, I think it was the first day when we split up for, for my travels and she went home. Um, yeah. I tried to go to a restaurant and um, get me some food. And I thought, hey, <coughs> sorry, um, it can't be that difficult, right? So I went to a restaurant. They looked at me and I was like fully confident that they will understand English, right? But <laughs> it did not happen. So they gave me a paper without any pictures, everything in like um, like Mandarin characters, and I couldn't yeah. read it. I was like, 
Right. <laughs> um, the, the only thing I could read were the prices. And because of the exchange rate, the prices looked extremely high to me. It's like, oh, everything yeah. is like $100 here, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, which is apparently not, not as expensive as it sounds. Um, I, I don't know the conversion rate anymore, but it's like 10, 10 Australian dollars or maybe like six, seven euro. And so, so I basically ordered food based on the price. Um, yeah. I got some some funny stuff, um, but still something that, that I would eat, not too crazy. Oh, okay. And it was yeah, not that bad then. No, it was not that bad. But then I was like, I can't do this all the time. If I eat something that I really, really hate or absolutely don't like, too much grit. So the next time I went to the next restaurant, um, I took a picture of, of, of the menu, sent it to my girlfriend, um, gave her a call, please order me anything that you know I like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's then, a safe bet. But then you also need to order that stuff, right? So after yeah. knowing what I want, I passed the phone to, um, or I called my girlfriend, gave the phone to the waitress to take my order, and then she ordered the stuff for me, and I just took the phone <laughs> back. She, she she wrote down the the the, the price, or I just pay, paid whatever they, they they showed me, and that's the whole conversation. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Did you get to learn anything in, in, in Mandarin so far or? Oh, it's, it's not better than Ni Hao, which... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I, even I know that one. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, no, that, 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 that's it. I can also say I love you, but <laughs> no, I think that, that that's really it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, that's good. I mean, for your girlfriend, that's, that's really good. So you learned, you learned enough to, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, and be polite, say hello, and I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but and then now, now I mean, now you're working there, and you kind of, uh, as far as I know, you, you're, I don't know, you wish to stay in Australia for for a while. Um, do you think like how how is the I don't know the next months or the future look for you? Are you planning any any trips or? I don't know, moving to another country, coming back to Germany or something like that? Oh, um, my visa is actually expiring in October again. So we, we started already a long, long time ago what we want to do um, or like thinking about it. And we got a couple of plans. Um, we are both, well, I'm turning 30 next month. Um, my okay. girlfriend's already um, over 30. So like working holiday in different countries is not as easy anymore. Yeah, um, I still could, but she can't. <laughs> um, so I think for her, there's only like Canada where we can get your working holiday until the 35. Um, yeah. This is probably our plan B, but we try to stay here unless bushfires so or any other weird things um, keep happening here. Um, yeah. yeah, so we have a couple of but we have no idea what to do <laughs> oh okay so it's still discussing yeah you mentioned you mentioned the bushfires so i was almost like forgetting to to ask about it because it's like this is a more i would say it's a more like serious point because we all we all kind of uh followed up in the in the media like what was happening but like i don't know what is uh, how was it like from the from the you know from being in sydney and being around all this how was it like? How were the people reacting? How was it in the city? Because we also like I remember I talked to you in, the, in a certain point when the bushfires were happening, and it was really like there was a lot of I wouldn't say fog, but like a lot of smoke outside. So how how, how was it? How bad was it from from there? Um. So um, I, I work in a city and I live really nearby. Um. So like I walk to work every day and like the, the first time where we spent it was more like something is burning and I didn't really know what it is and um, like but I had this experience a couple of years be before where um, thought oh my, my flatmate just just burned so, so some food or so right um, but it turned out to be somewhere from the outside and then, then I googled um, 
uh, what it could be, why is Sydney on fire or in smoke and it was, was bushfire. And this time I was like, oh, okay, this must be some, some bushfires or so. But um, the last time it just, just disappeared after two days. Um, this time it lasted and went on and went on and just didn't stop. Mm. And yeah, so it went to a point where the whole city was just dark and in, in smoke and yeah, you, you in here I, th I think the news said like uh two two or no 20 bags of, of cigarettes or like really really extreme um there's this uh what's this app to to see how polluted the air is which turned out to be worse than in china or like in wow. beijing or the most polluted places in the world it was, it was just horrible and people here they were quite relaxed they were just you know taking it off oh, it, it always happens kind of thing but yeah yeah like but more relaxed, I, I found I like more a relaxing serious city, issue right? <laughs> pardon yeah I was, I was saying like it's it, it it may be more relaxed in the in the city right not like too like too close to the to the fires themselves because people are quite yeah oh um, yeah yeah i'm sure people were less easy going outside the city because obviously houses were burning half the, the wildlife burned all the koalas um kangaroos everyone suffered out there now, now they're like yeah. projects to rebuild stuff and even getting backpackers on board to ex get their visa extension instead of doing farm work helping with the bushfires um yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on and it was I, I think people outside the the, the city center um were more con concerned while in the in the yeah cbd everyone was just relaxed or seemed to be relaxed they probably had some friends or their way of processing the, the whole thing but yeah i didn't found them to be like concerned enough like it freaked me out yeah. like every day and i mean i wore those um masks and um yeah protection just not to inhale i didn't even open my windows during the, those days and everyone else was like oh who cares <laughs> i remember we went to the um christmas party and no one else was wearing w one of those masks while i was like protecting myself from inhaling all that stuff and, yeah ah, hopefully it doesn't happen again and hopefully um yeah <laughs> australia's recovering soon from from all that <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, at the, at hopefully not in that scale, right? Because, you know, bushfires are quite common in Australia in the, the hot season, but um, not not in, the, in this uh, yeah, magnitude. Not, yeah. This was a different level of bushfires. Like, there's a fire once or twice, and there's a little bit of smoke in the city, but um, I'm working on, on a really high level, level 28, um, yeah. to oversee the city, and you can see far, far, and like on on the worst days i could barely see um the, the, the building across the street because it was just dark wow like full of smoke and we usually have a really really good view from 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 there but yeah, yeah. during those days just dark so anytime soon i'll i'll end, end, end up the the interview on a on a like maybe a positive note like any anytime soon you're you're coming to europe to to visit i know i know i'm planning i'm planning some things to go down under but any, well, any plans yeah you're, you're a bit over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah true true that yeah but any any plans like for for you to come to europe and like or or go traveling again uh i actually have plans um a, f a friend of mine um is marrying okay. um i think uh, i'm already a terrible friend for forgetting the, the 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 date i think it was the 11th of july but yeah ho hopefully he's not listening to that that i forgot the date i have the invitation <laughs> somewhere downstairs <laughs> <laughs> but um more importantly um my cousin is expecting his first daughter oh, nice. so i think she is expected to see the light of the world in, in April. Okay. Um, as you may know, you probably don't um, go to see the baby on the first days, especially 
when you have like all the germs and bacteria so to protect the baby i better give it some time to build up an immune system and yeah. um see when the, when the baby's happy probably not walking um after two two three months but uh, you know having I would, I would freak smile. Out if the baby was walking in two months <laughs> You know, not everyone is as good as I was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, I think, I mean, I have no more topics, to be honest. Do, do you want to close or any, on any thoughts or anything you think is, is interesting? Well, what's your experience with, with um, Australia? When are you coming and why are you coming? What excites you about <laughs> this place? <laughs> um, well, um, Australia. I, I know you're not you're not into couch surfing. Um, I would offer you my couch, but I know you <laughs> prefer to steal my bed and send me back to the couch as you always did. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Those are other stories. Uh, <laughs> We can't say the details <laughs> in this podcast, but anyway, <laughs> I, I I don't know. I was I started to to plan the other day talk uh, talk to to Geraldine, like another another friend that you know quite well, and mm. um, I, I don't know. I realized that it's been already three years, like the last time I saw her. I know you came to to Europe, so I I saw you like before, but it's been three years already. So. I mean, more than three years. Yeah, more than three years. So, yeah, it just I, I be shortly after me. Should shouldn't it be four years? I think you left ah. in twenty sixteen, my friend. Yes, <laughs> yes, almost four years. Oh my god, almost four years. Yeah, you see, my math skills didn't get any better. But <laughs> yeah, well, it can't get worse from here, so. <laughs> You were always the guy good, being good at talking. <laughs> yeah, I'm still good at talking. Yeah, that's why I have a podcast, see? So I can talk more. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking... When I'm starting your TV me, show then. <laughs> yeah, so this year I'm going to visit my family. That's the plan. So I'm going to Brazil. And then I think next year it's uh, it's it's the year. I'm I'm starting to kind of plan already. You know, and of course, like you'll be the, the first to know. I want to visit all the people. So all the people I, I know in Australia, New Zealand, so Brisbane, Sydney, Perth. So, yeah, I mean, if you're still there, like you're saying, like Canada, so maybe I'll have to go. My to visa is expiring in October. Hopefully you're here before October. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> let's see, <laughs> let's see, let's see. But yeah, I mean, um, yeah, as as usual, good good talking to you. Thanks for participating in the in the podcast. I really <laughs> Thank you, appreciate really. it. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully we'll see we'll see each other soon. Yeah. Well, hopefully in July. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Vinny. Thanks for hosting me. Yeah, no problem. So just just for the listeners, uh, thanks for listening one more time, and yeah, just stay tuned for the next episodes. <laughs>